All right. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Tyler and we're back with another pink course review. This is like season three, episode two. So we're talking spring 2021 and we're gonna get right into it. So in spring 2021, I took chemistry 241 with Marissa Kozlowski and today I'm gonna give a review of this course. I'm gonna give a summary of the course structure. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the difficulty of the course, the quality of the course, and I'm gonna give some tips to do well in the course. Hopefully this video prepares you on what to expect in Chem 241, and hopefully you can do well in the course. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So Chem 241 is Organic Chemistry 1 at Penn. This is the third chem class in the four class series at Penn. And this is purely a class for pre-med requirements. There's no sectors that it fulfills. There's no foundations that it fulfills. The only people in this class are pre-meds or people who are taking it for their majors, which are mostly pre-meds, to be honest. So the summary of the course structure. All right, I took this spring 2021, so things might be a little bit different. It was online, but Chem 241 was made up of two asynchronous lectures every week, one ungraded recitation, there was a weekly problem solving session and there was also an associated lab. This lab is actually separate, so it's actually like a whole separate class, but most people were kind of enrolled in the class and the lab at the same time, but some people choose to take the lab later. So on a weekly basis, basically we had to watch two asynchronous one hour lectures. Then we would go to our weekly problem solving sessions where Basically, our professor would go through a few kind of hard problems that are based on the lectures that we were giving and we'll just kind of solve them with her, kind of bounce ideas off of her. For the most part, she kind of just did them for us, to be honest. There wasn't as much engagement as she expected, I guess. But yeah, we had that. We also had our weekly recitations, which were optional, but most people went to those and actually engaged. And we also had our weekly quizzes every Friday, which were low-key kind of hard, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Along with this, we had homework through Cengage software, which is the same homework software that you use in Chem 101 and Chem 102, so you should be used to it at this point. Um, to talk about the content of this course, the content wasn't split into very large distinctions like it was in Chem 102 but it is based upon each other, obviously. So you start off learning about the basic structure and principle of chemicals. Then you'll move into what's called mechanisms, which is basically just like chemical reactions. And then you're going to reactions with alkenes, which is just a hydrocarbon with a double bond. And then you'll go into reactions with alkynes, which is just a hydrocarbon with a triple bond. You'll learn about all of this later, so don't worry about it. Um, and then you end the course by doing a bunch of what's called synthesis problems, which is basically taking all of the mechanisms or reactions that you've learned throughout the year, and you'll make a chemical out of a given chemical. Yeah, so basically the question will be like, here, take this and make this into an alcohol, and you'll have to show the entire chemical reaction of how to get to an alcohol from a given chemical. That's kind of like the whole, what feels like point to, of the class to me, is to get ready for synthesis. Basically, the course content is very connected and it all culminates to you being able to do synthesis problems in the end of the course. To talk about the grading of the course, it was graded on a point system. And watching lectures and just coming to the problem solving sessions was a decent part of our grade. Most of our grade was the weekly quizzes and the final exam, so that's just how it is. So the quizzes were every Friday and they were usually about three questions based on the lectures for that week. The quizzes, they were actually pretty challenging and I think I'll just put an example right here just so you understand like what to kind of expect. They're not like super hard, but some of them were very tricky and it was kind of like that thing where you teach people how to do something in a certain way and then you ask them the one way that you didn't teach them in order to kind of get them to, I guess, use their knowledge or infer how to do things. So it was kind of like those type of quizzes where it's not exactly hard, but when you don't teach someone how to do it in that way, it can be hard. And then after you see the answer, you're like, oh, I could have guessed that. So just make sure that you get a lot of practice problems from really 
different sources outside of Penn if you want to figure out like the tricks and stuff because most of the assessments that we had in this class were not hard because the actual content was hard but it was more because we had never been asked that question in that way so that's what I'll say about the quizzes so now I'm going to talk more about the difficulty of the class this conceptually was probably the most difficult class that I've had. I can say that. Um, everyone knows organic chemistry is it's a difficult class a lot of times and it's sort of known as a weed out class and it is. I, I don't know why I thought maybe it wasn't, maybe people were just being extra, but this is literally a weed out class. So yeah, get ready for that. Um, it isn't impossible at all, but it does like really require that you put in ample time and effort at all times so that's one thing um this isn't a course that should be really mixed with many other difficult courses so like in my case i decided to take physics 102 at the same time as org and i thought it, physics was going to be harder than it was so luckily that worked out for me but in hindsight i probably should not have taken two sciences especially org in this at the same time but the way that it worked out with MCAT, I just had to. And I'm actually taking organic chemistry too and biochemistry at the same time this semester. So I never learned from that, but yeah. If you can, and if it's at all possible for you to kind of dodge taking a hard class while you're taking org one, it would probably be a good idea. But yeah, my estimate is that I probably spent upwards of 20 hours a week studying for this course. And like, this is the first course that I've really had to have like a strict study schedule and I actually stay up for because typically I'll have a hard cutoff of about 1 a.m. This is the first class that I really had to stay up till 3 a.m. just studying just cuz not even like the day before quiz but just cuz so get ready for that you'll get through it it's fine you just have to put in the work and yeah so now to get to the quality of the course this was a quality course in the way it was ran it was very organized through canvas and it was there was a lot of communication going on. There wasn't many times that I as a student felt like I was just being left out and I didn't know what to do. There was always some type of communication to everything that happened. So it was ran very strictly and very tight, but I did have some problems with the way that the professor treated questions. So I had Marissa Kozlowski and she was a very good professor and definitely capable of teaching the content of the course. But my problem came in when it started being time for office hours and people would ask questions. Um, Sometimes her responses felt kind of snarky and they felt kind of degrading in a way. And I didn't really appreciate that. She's basically the type to kind of answer your question with another question and not in a way that leads you to the answer, but really asking the exact question that you're asking she may ask it straight back to you. So I didn't appreciate that. I'm not telling you not to take the course with Marissa. I'm just saying to understand that you may be relying more on your TAs. And that's what I, along with like a lot of other people in the class did. There were like seven TAs. There were like a lot of them and they were very helpful and thorough when it came to answering questions. So I would definitely say have a good relationship with TA office hours and you should be able to get through the course fine. So summary slash tips to succeed. Um, this course is very difficult. It is a weed out course. So just be expecting that. You really need to be dedicated and really committed to the course in order to succeed. This isn't a course that you can throw in the back burner for like any amount of time. It really needs to be your primary focus for a while. So just be ready for that. Um, if you're taking the course with Marissa Kozlowski, possibly be ready to really take advantage of your TAs because those will probably be your best bet in getting questions answered like thoroughly and really like slowly. And also external support for this course. Um, Leah for Science is like a YouTube channel and that really helped me a lot with the course, um, especially when it came to explaining just small things that are really big towards the end of the course. And also make sure to make some type of document with all the different mechanisms as you learn them. Um, it just makes it very easy when it comes to studying. And then also when you're making flashcards for the mechanisms to have them all on a sheet written out 
is very good because you're just copying it over so you're writing it multiple times so definitely make sure you have a document with all of the different mechanisms that you learn in that order hopefully this helps and hopefully you can succeed in orgo one definitely possible make sure that you put in the hours and you dedicate yourself to the course and everything should be fine so and yeah make sure to like and subscribe and look out for the next pin course review which should be stat 111